cosines. So the law of cosines says that a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a. So that's one form of the law of cosines. Um, but there's actually there's three ways to rewrite this. So uh, let's take a look at those. So we have our triangle again. Um, so we could, it's going to be x angle that I have to into the, um, to would be x, uh, c minus x, because um, the whole thing is c. And for convenience, I'm going to label that point where the altitude hits side a, b as point d. And so that's going to let me talk about a couple of triangles. So the first triangle that I'm going to look at is going to be triangle b, c, d. Um, so that's kind of the right half of the picture. And in that triangle, I'm just going to use the Pythagorean theorem. And it tells me that a squared is h squared plus the quantity c minus x squared. And what I'm going to do is expand this. So a squared equals h squared plus um, square the first, multiply the other times 2, and then square the last. So c squared minus 2cx plus x squared. And I'm going to box that and save it for later. Now what I'm going to do is move to the left triangle, which is triangle um, ACD. So for triangle ACD, again, I'm just going to use the Pythagorean theorem, and it tells me that B squared is X squared plus H squared. Um, so now my ultimate goal, like this is another equation, I'm going to solve this for H squared, and my ultimate goal is to um, eliminate the H's and X's from these things, so i got to try to do that. So let's box that. Now I'm going to combine these two equations, because I can use H squared equals B squared minus X squared, and sub it into the first equation that I box and get rid of the h squared. And that's good, because I'm closer to not having anything I made up. So that gives me a squared equals, I'm replacing h squared, so b squared minus x squared, and then plus c squared minus 2cx plus x squared. Um, and this cleans up to a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2cx. But there's still an x in there, and I made up x when I was kind of dropping that altitude. So I still want to get rid of that, but I'm closer. Um, so now I need to find something that can relate uh, x to only parts of the triangle that I had originally. So if you look at that left-hand triangle, triangle um, ACD, uh, in that triangle, if I take the cosine of A, it's going to be x over B, and that's good because it, it relates A and B to x, and A and B are things that I was given originally. So I can solve this and get x equals B cosine of A. And now what I'll do is I will take um, the equation I just boxed and substitute it into the last one I boxed, so into here. And that actually gives me the law of cosines. So the law of cosines says that a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a. So that's one form of the law of cosines. Um, but there's actually there's three ways to rewrite this. So uh, let's take a look at those. So we have our triangle again. Um, so we could start with c squared, and if it's c squared, then we're going to have equals, it's the other two sides squared, so a squared plus b squared, minus two times those other two sides, so a, b, and then cosine of the angle. So as long as these two things are the same, so side c squared and then angle c, um, it doesn't really matter what order you put the other sides in, uh, it's going to work out for you. Um, or we could choose to focus on b squared. So if b squared equals other two sides are both squared, then minus two product of the other two sides. And as long as these are the same, b and b, it's going to work out for you. And then just to return to the one that we actually derived, we have a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus two bc cosine a. And again, you can see that a and a are the same. It doesn't really matter what order you put the b and the c into um, that particular form. Uh, it's going to work out for you. So that's actually how you uh, work out the law of cosines. I hope you found this helpful, and uh, good luck. I hope you found this helpful, and uh, good luck.
need my mic up. Hello! <laughs> right. And thank you for joining my the, the thing. We've got several people in the, the chat at the moment. Thank you very much for, for joining us. Um, I'm going to be doing some higher tier questions. Um, we're going to be learning about the cosine rule. If you've already studied the cosine rule, then this is revision. If you haven't studied it before, then I'm going to try and go through it and make sure it's as understandable as possible. Please forgive me. I'm new to this whole live stream, as you saw when I started with my mic on mute. But um, I'm going to try and make it as easy to understand for everyone. Uh, if you have any questions, please use the chat. Please remember, there's people from all over the place here. So even if, if you don't know, I just want people to res be respectful. I don't want to have to ban people or, or remove them from the chat because they're being inappropriate. So let's try, let's try and help each other out, help learn the stuff. I know how annoying it is to be off, off school for this length of time and to be stuck away from your friends and, and stuff. And I mean, just being stuck with family as well. But, but do your best to understand it. Ask me any questions, and here we go. We're going to launch into it. So first of all, yesterday I set you a challenge. If anyone joined me yesterday, each day I try and set a challenge for for, for people. And yesterday's challenge was to complete the um, Killer Sudoku on Daily Killer Sudoku. Uh, uh, I can't remember the website. .co.uk. .com. Anyway, this is my attempt yesterday. 19 minutes, 12 seconds, managed to get it finished. So that was puzzle 19849. You can still find that puzzle. I'd love to see your attempts at having a go at it. Um, post them to me either on Twitter, Facebook, or the School of Mr. Harris, where you can find resources and things. I'll start adding worksheets and things to go with the lessons. Or just email me. If you think you've done better, well done. I, I, I'd be massively impressed to see your efforts. Killer Sudoku, I, I think, are very mathematical. There's lots of tricks and tips. You can probably watch YouTube videos about them. But that's something interesting that you can be doing in this time where, you, where you're stuck. 15 seconds, Ralph. That's pretty impressive. Okay, so let's talk about the cosine rule, where it comes from and why it exists. To do so, I'm going to need to start with a triangle that is not a right angled triangle. We've all, we've all learnt our trigonometry to go with, the right, with right angled triangles. Suddenly we've got one that isn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose to arbitrarily give it some letters. A, B, and C. Because of that, I'm also going to give little a, little c, and little b as the lines that are opposite the capital letters for the angles. I'm then going to draw, choose to draw a line to separate straight down the middle. Now, it's not an isosceles triangle, we don't know what, what it is. But what we've got here is A, B, and C. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to break this down a little bit more. You may wish to be making notes on this. Obviously, it's on your screen, but having, having notes written down on this is really useful as to how it works. I don't know how far that is from there to there. I also don't know how high that is. When we don't know things, we can give it a name. I'm going to call that H. I'm also going to call that temporarily X. And because of that, I'm going to call this V minus X. Just this distance here to here. And that distance from there to there. All I have done is broken this B into something. Remember, X is just a question mark. We don't know what it is yet, but we know that this distance must be B, take away that distance there. Now, I'm going to need to do a series of bits of calculations to work out this rule. This is called deriving. Now, one thing you should never, you should derive. You should never try and do this under the influence of alcohol when you're older, when you're a sick former. You should never drink and derive. But... Um, one thing I would like you to do is to understand that we're going to come up and produce something that's going to be called the cosine rule. Now, just as an aside, that's really neat, isn't it? Just as an aside, um, I was reminded yesterday of an argument I'd been part of. So my, my family, there was a big argument going on and we all went out for dinner. And we were having dinner and this big argument uh, started. And my wife turned to me and she said, don't take sides. 
So I put the garlic bread back. Anyway, enough silly jokes. Let's get carrying on with this. So we've got our the thing that we've created this. We chose these sides, they are just made up. A, B, C, A, little A, little B, little C to the opposites. So first of all, I'm gonna start off up here with triangle, and I'm gonna call this point here D. I'm allowed to give it whatever name I want, just to allow me to call this triangle B, D, C. So I'm basically focusing on this triangle here. Now using Pythagoras theorem, we know that this side squared add this side squared makes this side squared. So we know that h squared plus b minus x squared, it's b minus x all squared, sorry, equals a squared. That's just Pythagoras theorem, which we know. So the next thing we do is we have expanding that bracket, b minus x, b minus x. The next thing we're going to do is expand the brackets, b times b, b times x, minus x times b, and minus x times x. That will give us b squared minus 2bx plus x squared. Next, we are going to do, that makes h squared plus b squared minus 2bx plus x squared. I do apologise if some people are being immature in the chat. I can't see it at the moment. Um, so uh, I will try and do... Uh, anything I can to remove silly, silliness, but I can't do it while I'm explaining. Um, if you need to, at any point, you can also, um, oh, you're right, sorry, that's moved over a little bit too much. Thank you, for that, that's, what, that's the purpose of the, of the live chat, you see. You're able to show me that that needed to be moved over. Like I say, I can't help you if you are, if people don't give me decent feedback. So, apologies for the delay on that. So, what I'm, all I'm work, fo focusing on is that bit there. So, that's, that's what we've got here. I'm going to park that for a bit, because that's A squared. And I'm going to come back to it shortly. The next thing I'm going to do is change colour. So I'm now going to focus on a different triangle. We did that triangle, BDC. We're now going to look at this triangle, ABD. If anyone gets lost, please pause, please rewind, do whatever, do whatever you need to to, to, help, to help out. Okay? Uh, here we've got triangle. Now this is going to go behind me if I'm not careful. So I'm going to remove a few bits to make it clearer for you. My writing on here will get neater as well. Uh, so here we go. In triangle ABD, we have another Pythagoras theorem. X squared plus H squared equals C squared. That seems much more sen sensible. There's no extra bits to expand. But we can rearrange it so that X squared equals c squared minus x squared. Well, the reason that's quite useful is we've already got an h squared over here. So let's pop it in. Carrying on in black, in red, a squared equals c squared minus x squared, because that's what we've just said over here, plus b squared minus 2bx, plus x squared. I now have a plus x squared and a minus x squared. They can cancel each other out. Next, we've got a squared equals c squared plus b squared minus 2bx. 
That means we've just got to find something for x. The final thing we're going to do is still focusing on this triangle. We're going to do one more thing. I'm going to do it in blue. If we think back to our trigonometry, hopefully you can see this. That's a right angle triangle. And we're going to call that angle A because it's where big A is. That means we've got X and C, which is things that we started with already. The A and the C is what we started this whole thing with. So if we label this as adjacent to hypotenuse, using our trigonometry, we can state that uh, cos A equals adjacent over hypotenuse, x over c. So x must equal, because we're going to multiply across to there, x, sorry, c must equal, I was right the first time, it's x, I've got myself all confused, x must equal c cos a. So let's go back over here. That x there can now be swapped with this blue bit. So we've now got a squared, uh, possibly behind myself now. So again, I've got to keep being aware of where I'm writing. So I'm going to write this all on a new, new page now. What I'm bringing from the last page with me is this bit here. And I'm also bringing this bit here. So I'm going to try and put those bits together. So if I write that all together, I now get a squared equals c squared plus b squared minus 2bc cos a. And that is called the cosine rule. What it is is a rule we're going to be able to use to help us to find the... W anytime we don't have a right angle triangle, anytime you're trying to find um, uh, out what things are. So I'm just going to give people a chance to write that down. Okay, sorry for the, uh, the delay, just making sure people are being sensible. Okay, so we are going to now try and to use this formula, because there's no point having a formula. In fact, there are various versions of this formula. Hopefully, if I write them all out, we'll be able to use them. What they basically mean is, if I go back to the previous slide, that was my triangle. Well, I don't, it, was, it all looks a bit messy. So let's simplify it. I'm going to grab one more of these and go back. If I've got a triangle and I, and I label the sides as I did on the previous slide here, just to show you, that's the previous slide. A, B, C. So it's A, B, C, and that angle, therefore, forgive me, I'm still having a few teething issues. We'll get there. Thank you for your patience. So that angle there we called angle A. We've got little c, little b, little a, we can fit the numbers in. So if we, this was our thing, and instead of A, B, C, we were given some numbers. So let's say around this, we were given some numbers and an angle. So we're given the angle 35 degrees. We're given a question mark, 7 centimetres and 8 centimetres. What this formula means is, 
I can find out, this is little a because it's opposite capital A, I can work out that A squared must equal C is op little c is opposite c, the big C, little b is there. So that's 7 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 7 times 8 times cos 35. And that can all be done in a calculator. Anyone, everyone still following me? I'm hoping they are. If there's any questions, please do ask me. I know this is more difficult. I, I, I understand well done those people that are still bearing with me. I'm just trying to make sure that you understand what, what's going on. So we've got that a squared equals 7 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 7 times 8 cos 35. Therefore, we can then say that a squared equals, and then we work it all out in a calculator, 7 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 7 times 8 and then it's cos 35. And that works out at 21.25. So therefore we square root that to work out that A equals 4.61. That is how you go about using the cosine rule. We put the numbers in. I guess the best way to do this is, is to now do one together where I give you a chance to copy one down and have a go at it. So here we go. We've got a question here. We want to know x and we've got values of the numbers either side. This cosine rule works whenever we've got a, something we want to know is opposite an angle. <coughs> we can rearrange it, but it's normally given to you as the side you want is opposite the angle. So, using everything we've learned, copy that triangle down, pause the video, give it a go, see if you can recall how to do it, uh, and then hopefully you'll be able to work it out. But pause it, give it a go, and I'm going to go through it very shortly. Okay, anyone who had, did want to pause it and have a go themselves, that's fine. So now I'm going to just go through everything we just done. So this is a, a formula you have to know. It's on your need to know formulas on your GCSE. We have to write, write down that the formula is a squared equals b squared plus c squared. So, so Pythagoras minus 2bc, those two letters, cos the capital letter of the letter we're talking about. Therefore, we're going to label it. We're going to call that little a. So that must be big A. We're gonna, and it doesn't matter which way we do around we do these, but we're going to call that big B and C. So that's little C, that's little B. Notice how the little the letters are the little letters are the sides opposite the big letters angles. Therefore, we're putting everything in. X squared equals 13 squared plus 10 squared minus 2 times 10 times 13 cos. Uh, cos 100. This is again is in the calculator. Feel free to put it in. Let me know if there's anything that you can do, okay, or can't do. 13 squared plus 10 squared minus 2 times 10 times 13 cos 100 equals 314. Point one, uh, one five. If I round it to two decimal places, now I'm not rounding that in my calculator. So normally I would put point one four eight or one four, and not actually round it, because until we get to the end of a question, we should never round. So I'm going to leave this as point one four. And then a dot, dot, dot to show I haven't rounded it. And I'm going to square root it and press the A and S button to give me that X, I think, is 17.7. And it's 72, which is one decimal, so we'll put 724. It wants one decimal place, so it's 17.7. Okay, just seeing if there's any questions. 
Okay, any questions? 17.7 is exactly what I've got there. Uh, when? I guess that's Ben. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that this is make, making sense to you. I know some people have already covered it. I'm trying to make sure it makes sense to people and where it came from, that cosine rule. Now, the only other thing that I haven't covered is the fact that the cosine rule... There's two more questions, so I'm going to put that on there so you can pause. Then you could work through that one yourself. And there's that one as well. And it says work out the length of AB. So again, we've got um, a cosine rule. And I'm happy to post up answers to those once you've had a go at them. Okay. Uh, so... That's how those work. Now there is one more format. Format. Sometimes you're going to get asked to find an angle. So it might have this, this a triangle like this, and instead of telling you, it might have the question mark is the angle, but it gives you all the sides. When that happens, normally the format format is a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus two b c cos a. But unfortunately, we want the angle, which is trapped in here at the moment. It's, it's in there. So what we do is we rearrange. Cos A equals A squared minus B squared minus C squared, all divided by minus 2BC. This is a second version of the formula I recommend learning because we can now do the cos minus one step that strips away cos and gets you what, the, what that side is. We could do a, so cos a, in this example I've done up here, is equal to, it doesn't matter which one, but I'm going to make it cos a, so that little one must be a, that can be the either way around. So we're going to make it equals seven squared minus six squared minus eight squared, all over minus 2 times 6 times 8. So we're going to get a value there of 7 squared minus 6 squared minus 8 squared is minus 51. And negative 2 times 6 times 8 is minus 96 and we're going to need to do the cos minus 1 button to that fraction of minus 51 over minus 96 notice those two minuses will cancel out and we want to do cos to the minus 1 of that and we get that the angle A is equal to 57.9 degrees now I know how dry some of this is. I understand not all of my live streams will be this dry, okay? But I want you to have a chance at working through these questions. I want you to have a chance at learning it. I want those people to not to have a, a chance of not falling behind. Feel free to pause to start the video again to look at anything I've gone through here. I want to I want to make it so it's interesting for you. But the first few topics I've got, there's a few things I'm trying to help my year 10s with because they're off. So some of them may, may, may be watching. And I really hope that this has been informative. Because it's so dry, each time, I, each time we do a lesson, I'm going to try and do a challenge for you. Yesterday, my challenge was to try and do the, the Killer Sudoku. Hopefully some people have had a go. If not, ha feel free to have a go. But... The other thing I'm going to challenge you to is, is Taskmaster. If we go down to the end of all these questions, I have a challenge for you. Highest Tower wins. To win, you just need to send me a picture, either to the Twitter, to the Facebook School of Mr. Harris page, or to my email, of the highest tower you can make, but... No object in the tower can be repeated. You can't use 12 sheets of paper. You can't use 12 books. You can't use 12 DVDs. You can't use a card, two old cardboard boxes. Every item you put in that tower to make it as high as it possibly can go 
must be different. I'd love to see your attempts. I'd love to see anyone who watches this afterwards have a go at the, the challenge. Um, I will be sharing it, the, the best photos I receive. If I receive any photos, I'll be sharing them at the start of tomorrow's live stream. Where tomorrow um, is going to be some stuff all about the COVID-19 maths. I'm going to do some stuff explaining the maths behind the uh, virus that's keep coronavirus that's keeping us all off. This there's all sorts of things going on, and it's not easy to understand. I'm also going to try and make it interactive with you. I'm still learning live streaming. Please bear with me. Please give me feedback. Please help help out. Feel free to re rewind things. Feel free to um, work on different things. Now, someone was asking what the answer to question three is. So let's just go through that together. Okay, we have this question. So uh, we can go. This must be, uh, we're going to call it little a. So that's, oh, that's going to be little c, isn't it? And so that's going to be called little b, and that's going to be called little a. So we're going to use this version. c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos capital C. A, b, a, b. C at the start, c at the end. So c squared must also equal 12 squared plus 15 squared minus 2 times 12 times 15 cos 20. Therefore, c equal, c squared equals, we remember how to square root, c squared equals 12 squared plus 15 squared minus 2 times 12 times 15 cos 20 equals 30 0.71 and we square root the answer to give us c is equal to 5.5 and it wants it to one decimal place so 5.5 hopefully that's what you were expecting Scythe um, hopefully that, that's something that you've learnt from I'm trying to make it as interactive as possible I can only do that if people are obviously using the, using the chat sensibly trying to make sure that it's it's useful to you and let me know if there's any questions you have, any topics you want me to go over, anything you'd like me to do, it doesn't all have to be dry maths. I'll try and make it as interesting as possible. Unfortunately, the cosine rule is one of those things that it's just a little bit like that. So in order to make it more interesting, remember, I want to see your towers. I want you to send me your highest towers. I want to see, remember, follow the Taskmaster rules. You can only use each object in the tower once. Send me photos. Um, thank you very much for joining me in the live stream. I've been Mr. Harris, uh, very tired, and he's been talking to, him, to himself all day. So, so sorry for all the, uh, the umming and ahhing. I'm doing my best. I'm trying to make it as interesting as possible. Um, maybe see you tomorrow. Thank you very much.